And again, I've been bought this and this by Wendy Ixon. What a star. Should we get it built? Shut up and sit down. Yeah, what a star. Thank you very, very much, Wendy, for your generosity. And so, folks, let's have a looky loo. We've got the Kawasaki Ninja H2 Carbon. Stunning machine. Seriously sexy. Remember, like and subscribe and ring the ding a link. We've cut the engine bits off the sprue, as you can see just behind the old instructions there. So we're going to be assembling this area on the instructions. Section 1 by Powers of Deduction. Let's start at the beginning. So, yeah, been looking forward to this one. Been a while since I've done a bike build. So, yeah, Wendy very kindly sent this through to me. And it's been sat there and I've been wanting to get it done and wanting to get it done. And finally, I've got round to starting it. So, yeah, this one's going to have quite a bit of detail up on it. She's also got me the detail upset, so it's going to have a bit of that on there. Things like the brake calipers, chain, all of that lot. So yeah, got that all to look forward to, folks. So we'll start by getting a bit of extra fin on these engine halves and the, on the strengthening bar and start putting this bad boy together. Typical to me, a bike really is a smooth fit on every on everything excuse me and it's just a matter of comparing the bits to the instructions dry fitting everything just to have a quick looky loo once you're happy with where it is then uh, and uh, it all sits neat and tidy then you can get the old glue on there and stick it all together helps if you've got the right bit cold on it off to a good start here don't be like Festa. There you go. See, didn't think it felt right. So we've got a dry fit on that. I'm just quickly spinning it round to make sure there's no big, big gaps. And then we can start looking at dropping the other bit in like so. See? A quick dry fit just to make sure everything is accessible for when you go to put the old extra fin on there. And I'm happy with that. So we'll have a little looky loo. We'll put this back one on first just to let the glue find its way through. And it works on capillary reaction, folks, this stuff. Just a little dab on there. And it scoots all around the seam. And then just give it a little squish. And it will weld itself together because it's a welding glue at the end of the day. So you just put a couple of dabs in there along the side of the engine there. Just give that a little squish. And you're using the kit's own plastic to get that to glue together. And it will fill in any any minor seams. Obviously, if you've got any big seams, then you'd go around it with a bit of sprue glue on the inside. Just to close off the seam. And then that way, when you prime it and everything, it will be seam free. But you don't get many big seams on a Tamiya bike, to be honest with you. Normally it's on the mud guards and the fuel tanks, depending on whether they're two-piece or single-piece, obviously. But I think on this one, I've got a seam to get rid of on the front mud guard, and that should be it. So I quickly just whack a blodge along the seam there. Same the other side. Give that a little squishy room. And that'll go together. Like so. So we'll try to break this build series up into manageable segments. I'm toying with ideas of changing up different things on how I do my builds. So I'm just playing at the moment with different different ways of doing it rather than mahoosive long-winded build series. I might just break it up into things like frame. Chassis, engine, that sort of thing. So people can pick and choose the episodes they want to watch, then whatever they're interested in, because a lot of folks might not have built this kit before. 
and they might be struggling with a particular section and they can quickly have a looky loo on here and they can see which episode it is. So just toying with little ways of doing things just to keep it fresh. A couple of ancillary bits and pieces to go in there. A little start motor housing. Get you some of that in there. A little dab of extra fin underneath there. And I've been round and deaned up all these bits. Most of you all know how to get stuff off of a sprue anyway, so it's just a matter of using the nippers. Cut a couple of mil away from the piece. Then use a nice, nice, decent set of nippers to cut it flush. And then get your sanding sticks out and just give the edges a little sand. Just to get rid of any remnants of the nub and that's it. So you all know how to do that anyway. It's pretty, pretty um, easy stuff. If you do need to see it in detail, there are other videos that I've got on the channel that I'll have it on there. But we'll just give that a little squishy kins. And then we can put a dab just on that bottom peg in there. Like so. Another little dab in there. It's a tiny little peg just on the inside. I want to. Want it to get a bit of glue because when the sump goes in, sometimes it can just push the bottom of the engines apart slightly. So I want to get a bit on that peg just to give it a bit, bit more bite. But look at that! Brum, brum, brum. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I already want to do brum brum noises, and I've only put five bits together. But really, yeah, that'd be a lot faster. Let's get the cylinder head or rocker cover on even. Make sure it's the right way round cut. Right, what we got next? Looks like I've got a couple of pieces for the air box and some side covers. So let's just have a look. See how that sump looks underneath there. Just want to make sure that it, it isn't a tight, tight fit. It doesn't seem to be on this one. So we can go ahead and put a little bit of glue in the corners and around the edges. And then we can press that into place. Like so. Little squeeze. And actually that is a really decent little fit on that. There's no, no tension on that. Like I say, sometimes there can be a bit of tension across the bottom there and it'll just pop the, the bottom part of the engine block apart. But on this one, it's actually pretty damn good. Quite a nice looking engine, actually, as engines go. Yeah, looking forward to getting that all painted up. And this is a semi-naked bike, this one, so you do see a lot of the engine and the trellis frame, so it has got quite a distinctive look about it, this bike, so... As you can see from the picture in the bottom left there is quite a lot of the engine and that exposed. So I really want to make sure that, yeah, she looks her best on this one because you are going to see a lot of it. I've got a couple of bits on the old air box there. Get that together. There's a couple of little ear rolls on the inside of this that you need to remember to trim off as well. Where the sprue gate was, so just keep an eye on that, folks and make sure that you just check on the old instructions because it does highlight where they are. And then you won't end up trying to push bits together that don't quite fit. Because we don't want that, do we? We want this to go together nice and easy. There's just a nice little push fit there. little squish. Just hold it for 60 seconds or so, and yeah, the glue will do its thing, folks. Let's quickly check where the eyes are seeing this. And there is just a little bit more glue I want to put in there. Just to make sure that that's biting, because there is a slight gap, and I just want that to, to squish out a bit more. Yeah, it's a bit better. Just give that a squish. There you go. 
again, if I need to, I can always come back with a bit of white top and put a bit of that on there and that will fill any gaps. But I just want to try and get that to just squish together a bit better. All right. Might as well put these on sticks. And I've got to be gloss black in pretty much most of the bike before then all the base colours go down. So I've got a, a board behind the glue pots there with the sticks in that all my bits and bobs are getting put on. So they'll do that. Now that frame, right where the headstock is, if you notice, they've, they've got solid triangles there at the front. Now, the real bike, that's all open and exposed. So they've obviously moulded this and put it in for a bit of strength. Right in there, see? It's solid. That should be trellis like the rest of the frame. So me being me, I ain't happy with that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of that. I'm going to chop it out. And then I'll put a little reinforcing diagonal uh, tube in there. But I'm just going to mark off with me sharpie what part of the frame I want to get shot on. And then I'll get my old display grinder out and I'll get rid of that and drill it, get the uh, engraving head in there and burr out as much of it as I can. And then I'll go at it with the files then. But yeah, I get why they've done it because obviously one to help scale, they would just want to give that headstock a bit of strength. But it kind of, for me, it just... Uh, and being that the frame's exposed, there is, you know, a slight angle where you'll actually see that that's solid. And, uh, yeah, it's just messing with me a bit, so I want to get shot of that. You know, you can leave it. You don't have to do what I'm doing here, but I think you'll see when it's done, it, it does make it look a little, little bit better. So, uh, yeah, a bit of overkill from Fester, I know, but, hey. This is me, isn't it? I'm not happy unless I'm chopping something off a kit. So we'll get a bit on the swing on and get the halves of that together. And then I think we'll come back once that uh, is ready to be sorted. We'll have another look at the frame in a minute. But for the time being, I want to get both halves of this together. In the background there, I've got the trunking that goes along the side of the engine and I've put a styrene strip in there just to fill the back of it. I've got another one in the box next to me that I'm going to do in a minute. So I'll show you in a bit more detail what I mean. But I just want to get this bit of the swing arm together and all of this can be drying in the background then whilst we're doing other stuff. Plenty of extra thin in there. Really ain't worried at the moment that it's on the surface because this is all going to be sanded, buffed and de-seamed anyway. But for the moment, I just want to get both halves together nice and tight. Right, what have we got now? This is the, uh, what's his name, paddock stand. And it's a two-piece stand that goes on one side of the rear wheel just lifts the back end of the bike up so you can display it. So I might as well get this built now and all. And it's all sub assemblies, all bits and pieces that can then go straight into paint and be done nice and quick, he says. All being well, that is. It'll be a nice quick build. Famous last words now, Fester, isn't it? You've got to put dampness on it. There you go. A little bit of that. What now? Dum, 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 dum. Let's have a look. See what else we got in that box there that we can quickly get, get the built. Might as well few little sub assemblies that I can be getting on with so I'll just have a little route around and see what else we can come up with right let's quickly give that a send 
there you go. This is the other part of the paddock stand that comes up, clips into the wheel. So I want to get the old Citadel scraper on there because there's a right old mould line going right down the middle. We don't want that on there. <laughs> and that poor old battered sanded stick there. <laughs> well butchered, isn't it? So let's have a look. Drop that on there like so, see? And that then comes round the other side. Like that. Joins in there. Funny little, funny little way they done this one. But it's what's used. So we'll just have a little look at the instructions there. There's another bit somewhere. There it is. So let's drop that on there. It's making sense now, see? That bit goes on there, Cole. That's what you want. There you go. See? The clue's in the picture next to you, mate. <laughs> yeah, I don't get out much. There you go, little dog. Put glue in there. And we can bring that piece round then. Poke that in there. Lift that just at the angle of the dangle, sweet bites. And then that will leave just that one piece then to go along the side there, see, because it's got a nice little offset. And try and use the bench to your advantage. There you go. And that is the paddock stand. Yeah. Try not to twitch, Cole, because, yeah, it'll end in tears, mate. Right, let's get this bird out. This is that triangular section of the frame, and I've got me little uh, battery dish bay engraver. And what I've got on there is I've got a cone-shaped burr. So I've already drilled a tiny little pilot hole and all I'm doing is I'm just going through it with the burr and it's a bit like a step drill. It's just enlarging the hole enough so that I can then start working me array around the shape and just burr the edges off. And I want it to sit just proud about a millimetre, maybe a bit less, and then I can go at the rest of it with a file and a set of the old flexi file sanders to smooth it all off, but I want to get the bulk of the material out using this little bad boy, and it's not a massive amount of force or power that it's got, but for this sort of job it's perfect, because it doesn't melt the plastic into a big blob, it just gently burrs it away bit by bit, gives you a nice bit of control, a Dremel's fine, but sometimes it can be just a bit too aggressive and the plastic will just heat up and yeah, it just turns into a blobby, congealed mess, whereas doing it this way, we're just caressing the plastic gently, and it's just burring the material away that you don't need enough so that you can come back at it then and do a bit more deft lipstick and mascara on it. And, uh, yeah. It'll give you a nice cut out then on the frame. It looks like it's been <laughs> looks like it's been shot at the moment with a blunder bus, but believe you me, it will come together. And at the time of filming in, this is the early hours of the morning, so this is quite a nice little therapeutic little therapeutic way to spend the wee twilight hours of the morning doing me thing. And just working me away around both sides just to try to keep or maintain uh, the tubular construction of the frame because it's a trellis frame. Just trying to nurse the excess plastic away so I don't end up with too many flat spots. And it's just a matter of knocking it out bit by bit by bit. Take your time. And the fruit of your labours will be rewarded. And it's already beginning to get rid of that big blob of plastic out of there. 
and you, you'll get what I mean when you see when you see it all uh, fitted up with its spa and that. It just will make it look a little bit, a little bit neater. I just want to just gently get rid of that bit. There's a little fitting in the corner there for the steering damper. You don't want to grind that off. You want to keep that. So don't forget, folks, just make sure you don't knock that off inadvertently because you want to keep hold of that. That's it. It's just, just getting rid of that horrible, gnarly old bit of plastic. Or that. There you go. So that's the bulk of that done. So when you switch that off. Change the bit. And then we'll come back with the files now. These are a little, little set of jewelers files that I've got. And yeah, just gently taking off any excess plastic now. Just to bring it down close enough so that then all I've got to do is go through with a flexi file just to smooth everything off. So yeah, you can afford to be a little bit more, say heavy handed, but you can really go at it now with your files. And they only take off a m m minuscule bit. So yeah. Working my way into the, the corners and this is a triangular shaped file this one so I can get right into the tight corners on this bad boy and know that I'm getting it nice and precise and already I'm, I'm feeling happy that I've just taken this little extra step on this because yeah it just makes it look a bit sweeter doesn't it and you're all nodding your heads hopefully Yes, Vesta. <laughs> Here you go. Let's use the mat to its advantage to clean off the file. Like so. I must change these scabby cutting mats and all. Got a new set. Got a new set over there that's been sat there for ages. And I will get round to emptying my bench off and changing them. But, yeah. Like, don't be proud. Let's get the old flexi file in there, like so. Give that to Beans. There you go. Have you a bit of that? This is a little 3D printed uh, flexi file frame. Oh, uh, yeah. Comes in handy, the old printer, I must admit. I just use ordinary uh, wet and dry paper. I'll cut it into strips. A little dot of super glue to build a loop. And Bob's your uncle. You got yourself a nice, cheap, and cheerful flexi file. And have you a bit of that? Look at that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, that'd be a lot faster. Thread that through there, I'll just hook that on there. But look, look, folks, that has to me made a difference. Only a small difference, don't get me wrong, but an important one for me. So we can glue both halves of this together, and then what I'll do in the next episode is I'll show you the uh, little, little bit of styrene. It's only a little tiny styrene bit of. Um, solid round bar you just cut a tiny little strip of it just to, to put a little diagonal brace back in there it just makes it look like the rest of the frame then yeah so all right it's an hour of time edited down but productive and i think it's just just made that look a little bit a little bit sexy, look at that. Whoa, isn't it? Much better, Cole. Yeah. Please nod. <laughs> yes, Vesta. 
That's what this is all about. All right. Let's get some more bits and bobs built. So we're going to be knocking together the radiator and things like that. I've got loads of loads of bits and pieces to go on this, but I want to get one of these done on camera so you can see what I mean when I fill this in. If you look, it's like a semicircular piece of plastic they've used to replicate the ducting, but I kind of want to close it off because it's supposed to be, it's supposed to have a flat panel on the inside. So it's like a semicircle piece of tubing all the way along. But for some reason, they've obviously to mould it is cheaper. But yeah, I kind of want to close that off. So I shall close that off with a bit of thin styrene plastic. I just want to quickly go around and scrape off any of the rounded edge that it's got on it, because obviously I want a flat edge. And then if there are any gaps, I can always get rid of that bit of sprue goo or whatever later on. But I just want to make up a nice, nice flat piece to go in there just to give that a little bit more realism. Even though it goes against the side of the engine from the other side, you'll be able to see that that's an open piece of plastic rather than the flat closed bit that it should be. So. We've got a sheet of really, really thin styrene, so we'll we'll start making our filling panel, I think. So just a matter of putting dabs of glue all along, and then I'll get all my clamps out and clamp it as I go along, and it should then start conforming to the shape that we want. It's a bit like a spoon end, all this shape. It's not perfectly flat. It's got a curve and then it goes off at a slight angle. So I want to try to use the flexibility of this styrene to my advantage. That's the theory. So let's get rid of that lug hole off the end of there. And see whether we can begin to start getting this to comply. I think that'll fit. So we can have a bit of a trimmage. Just to take a bit of the relief off of the front edge there and then like I say you can go around and finesse it once it's all finished but for the moment there's a couple of little bits on there that I'm working around the shape of just so that I can get that nice and tight like that so we'll dig out my clamps and that in a minute but we can make a start on getting this done and it'll be worthwhile, it's just another one of those little touches that just just makes it look a bit more realistic. I just need to figure out whether there's going to be any tension on that. Because if there is, I'll get the big clamps on it and do it in stages. Apologies, I just went off shot there, folks. Let's try and get back on. But there you go. I'm using the extra fin just to start melting around that curve. I know it's sitting proud at the moment. I'm not worried about that. It will get trimmed back. But I want to use the glue to my advantage here and have it start melting. Because as it does, it will weaken the styrene slightly enough to maintain that curve. Do the same along here. Because the long length of it isn't quite as tight as the curve, I can probably put a clamp on that and then work my way each end as the curve tightens each end. So that's my theory. Let's just see where that ends and see if we can do a fold across there and then I can trim that. Because this will get wrapped in carbon fibre later on in the build, this piece. So. If there are any slight cut issues, the carbon fibre decal will conceal that anyway, but hopefully there won't be. But again, I just want to get that filling panel in there so it's done. Just keep 
keep a little bit of pressure on there just so that it melts together. And for its first, first bit of gluing, it's not actually that bad. It's you're probably going to need a couple of clamps on it just to get that real tight curve in there. But let's just start trying to lose some of the excess just to take the pressure off of it on that bend and it might pop straight in then. There's quite a bit of wingage on the side there of excess plastic. So I think we've taken a bit of that off. It should just let that start forming up. So we'll give that a bit of welly in the corner now. But yeah, it's not coming along too bad, actually. All right, let's get the old knife of trimming this and just start using the piece just to sculpt and get rid of any of the excess. Now, I am going away from myself. I'm desperately trying to avoid slicing into my finger there. And all these little bits of off cuts will get used to refeed my sprue goo bottle, so... But as plastic comes off that you don't need, it just starts helping that corner go in then. We'll do the same this side. Not the final cut, this is just to get rid of the excess. And then I can use my sanding sticks and, and files and that to fettle. Once it's all gone off, but that gets pretty much that filled in. Once that's all carbon fibred, it's going to look a lot more realistic. Again, you don't have to do this. Uh, but for me, it just, it's worth doing. It takes a couple of, couple of minutes, a little bit of uh, spare styrene. Bob's your uncle. Once this has all been wrapped in carbon fibre, yeah, it's going to look mint. I think so anyway. Just get rid of a bit of any excess glue out the way. And then this I shall just leave for a good few days just to let go off and do its thing. I probably will put some clamps on it overnight. I'll give it another couple of dabs of glue in a few places just to, just to get it to really stick together. On first inspection, I'm actually going to need a great deal to be on this review. Uh, yeah, quite pleased with it. Get the front edge of buff there because there's a fingerprint on there, Carl. Don't want that, do you, mate? There you go. Get rid of all of the gubbins off there. There you go. Yeah, what a place, wasn't it? Happy days. Just give that a bit of a bevel. Yeah, I think that's going to work a treat, you know. We'll soon find out when it comes to covering it in carbon fibre. If I go suddenly quiet and you see a puddle forming on the bench, you'll know that the tears are forming because it didn't go to plan. But at the moment, I'm being optimistic. He says. <laughs> go. Work me way along there. Just want to take the shine off of this a little bit. It's not actually sitting proud at the moment, so yeah, I'm quite quite chuffed with this. Yeah, get the old scraper on there just to put a nice bevel all the way along that edge. Like so. They come in really handy, them scrapers, I must admit. Handy little handy little addition to the repertoire that is of tools. 
I must admit. A little bit of a little bit of fluff along some of these edges here. So I'm just go back along with me knife and add a nice fresh blade put in at the beginning of this episode. So I just want to use that to my advantage. Just gently shave along there now and get some of these little bits off. And you'll see the old rabbit ear form in there where the excess plastic's just getting trimmed away. And it just neatens that and tightens that down a bit more. There you go. Do the same that side as well because it's just sitting where that little bracket is with the bolt on. It's just sitting a little bit proud there. It's yeah. Little fettle. Think. There you go. Yeah. That's better. Nice one. Use my scuzzy old sanding stick just to give that a bit more smoothage. I could see me over fettling this bit, and yeah, but. Just wanted to, to show you how I've gone about doing the other one, so might as well use this to our advantage. Because not everyone knows how to do this sort of stuff, so, you know, it's the whole idea, isn't it? Just pass, pass stuff on. I often get asked how I do things. I had a lot of that when I did my bus bill. People were like, how did you manage to conceal the wires, and how did you make this, and how did you make that? So... I learned a valuable lesson there to, to sit and actually demonstrate stuff now and then. So and it helps us all just become better builders at the end of the day, doesn't it? A little bit extra detail, don't hurt. Just quickly buff the rest of this up. And... Uh, yeah, Captain Twitchy. And then this bit can go on the uh, collection of pegs ready for going in for paint. And like I said earlier, uh, this is all getting done with a gloss coat or a gloss black base. It's all getting painted with lacquers. Uh, so I've got the zero paint set for this bad boy. So uh, we'll be doing that and it's the, the full set. So I'll go through that in a future episode when I'm about to paint it, I'll show you what it is that you get in the set and, and all the different products that come with it. So you're in for a treat there. And then I'll uh, clear this with the zero clear. So I shout out to PJ for suggesting getting hold of some and trying it. So I should be trying that out on this build. So uh, good old PJ putting me onto that. I've ordered a couple of bottles. <laughs> Because I normally use an automotive 2 clear, 2K uh, clear. But they should all give that a try. He said, see, see what you think. So I'm always open to advice and different ways and uh, products. So I thought, well, why not? Let's give that a little bit more of a, a deft scrapage. I knew I'd end up fettling with this bad boy. Uh, But it's one of them, if I don't do it now, I'm going to forget. And then, yeah, I'll come to paint it and it'll be, damn, I didn't fit all that. Oh, uh, yeah. Best get it done now, can't. I could still feel a teensy wincy little bit in there. But it's funny, I'm doing all of this and this is the part that actually sits against the engine, so you're not going to know that there's a, a tiny little lump there, but kind of know it's there but anyway let's just give that a quick brush off just to see how she's looking yeah and like I say there's carbon fiber going on this probably do a straight weave on each end and then do the twill on the middle ducting so there's a little break up of the carbon pattern then all in all, quite pleased with it. So, we'll get the two halves of the front mug guard together because we need to lose this seam. I'm using the, to be a white cap, the normal stodgy stuff, just to try and squish 
a bit of glue out and a bit of the plastic. And then I'll brush over the whole of the seam and the top part of the mug guard with the white cap so it forms a layer of glue over the plastic. And that's what you then sand down to get rid of the seam. So you smooth out almost like a thick glue uh, coat. But you want to do it in layers, folks, because if you put it all on at once, you do risk melting the plastic. So do it in stages. But use it to your advantage. Just put a bit of extra thin under there just to kick the thick glue. Give it a kick start just to give it a bit more squish. And then we can see what we've got there. Because we want to lose that seam. Or lose it as much as I can. Because I could paint this. It calls for gloss black on the front mud guard, but I kind of fancy carbon fibre in it. It's the same as this as well, the underside of the seat unit. I might carbon fibre that as well, so <clears throat> I'm toying with it. Because I'm going to see one metalise the fuel tank, the fairings carbon fibre, the top part. Uh, the side cowlings are, the kit calls for gun metal. But I might base it with gum metal or I might even just gloss black it and see one metalize them as well. I really don't know at the moment. So I'm toying with different ideas. Same as the side uh, plate on the exhaust. I might do that with carbon as well. Because it is a ninja carbon at the end of the day. So yeah, I may, may change it up a little bit. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes, put it that way. And we'll just sand and buff these little bits out and put the sides on and then probably wrap this episode up when this little piece is completed, the underside of the seat with the uh, rear foot pegs on. So I'd like to say a big shout out, obviously, to Wendy Hickson for sending this fruit to me. You are a darling. Uh, thank you to all my patrons. If you want to patron my channel to help support me and keep the content coming, head over to patreon.com forward slash Festa67's workshop. Or you can become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below this or any of my other video content. Or the join button on my channel and become a channel member. That gives you access to the Zoom 24 7 off air hangout that I run with Fox. So, yeah, you can come in, spend the evening chatting away with us. I'm in there most nights. And also going forward, I'm looking long term probably at doing uh, quarterly lives with the group of us. So if you are a patron and channel member and you've got a webcam and mic, as long as your audio and video are nice and clear, then you can come and join us on one of them uh, get togethers. Keep an eye out for them. I'm looking at launching them probably in the new year, 2023. So it's something I'm thinking ahead about doing. I'll chat to the Zoom lot and see whether any of them are up for it. It's just something in the pipeline to look forward to, folks. And that'll be a perk that you'll get as a patron and channel member. So bear that in mind. Give it a bit of consideration. It's all massively appreciated. It helps keep me going it helps keep the channel going and the content coming folks because without your generosity i wouldn't be able to do any of this so yeah it really is massively appreciated and obviously the generosity of wendy uh is enabled me to sit and film this build for you all so massive massive thanks and shout out to wendy hickson with an h for shipping this over to us. Massively appreciated, darling. And hopefully at the end of it, you'll think I've done it justice. So I just want to make sure I'm putting the right bit on this bad boy. Because, yeah, a couple of dabs of glue, but probably carbon fibre what's in my left hand. Uh, gun metal. Oh, yeah, I could gun metal the uh, eye bolt and all of that lot. And then carbon fibre, the other part that goes up the side of the frame. Hmm. 
Hmm. We need to have a think, don't we, Carl? Yeah. This is the beauty of doing this in sub assemblies because I tend to keep it on the bench on the left hand side there. It'll sit there. So you'll spot this properly on the live streams going forward. And I wait for the bits to sit and talk to me where I'm thinking of different ideas. So this one's going to sit there for a little while because I want this to be right because it's a wonderful gift and I, I want to do it justice. So I'm not going to rush this one. I'm going to take me time. And it'll be a nice sexy reveal at the end as well of the build. So keep an eye out for that. But we'll give that a squish together and we'll carry on thinking of paint ideas. And we'll get ready to wrap this up, I think. So massive, massive, massive thanks for watching. Uh, give it a thumbs up, folks, if you could. It helps recommend the videos and the channels. Uh, let your folks know. Give them a nod. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get. Don't let them guide your life towards regret. I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can Help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action And with a little time Just be patient, make a statement Try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down 